Hey guys, welcome back to the 48th episode of the Huggy Poker Vlog. For this one, we're heading back to the lodge in Austin, Texas, where we're going to play some 1-2-0 no limit hold'em. Don't let the stakes fool you, though, because these games play big, the pots get huge, and the action is pretty crazy, as you'll see. I don't want to keep you waiting, though, so let's jump into the action. Three hands in, we're dealt King Jack offsuit in middle position. There's a $5 straddle, and action folds to us. I bump it up to $15, and we get called by the button, big blind, and straddle, so the four of us take a flop. It comes down 5 ace 3 all spades, so we flop the nut flush draw. The blind and straddle check to us, and I see bet for about half pot, $30. The button folds, and both the big blind and straddle call. We get the perfect turn when we see the queen of spades. We've got the best possible flush, and we're only losing to a straight flush with four deuce of spades at this point, which is pretty unlikely. Both players check again, and the obvious play is to keep betting here. I think if we show aggression though, it's going to be hard for us to keep getting value from weaker spades hoping to see a showdown. Instead, I check for deception hoping to get one of our opponents to bet the river with one of those weaker spade holdings. The river's a brick with the 10 of hearts, and the big blind takes the bait, leading out for $60. Not only that, but the straddle calls as well. We're absolutely raising here, and I think we've got to decide on a mount that gets called by at least one of these players. I grab two stacks in front of me that look like a callable amount, pushing them forward. The dealer counts them out, and it's a bet of $150. The big blind deliberates for about a minute before finally putting in the extra $90, and the straddle folds. I show what's obviously the winner, and we more than double up just 5 minutes into our session. Two hands later, we've got ace-king offsuit in the plus 1 position. There's a $4 straddle, and I raise to $15. We get 5 calls from the hijack, the button, the small blind, the big blind, and the straddle, and the 6 of us head to the flop. It comes down queen high, giving us no pair and no draw. Given the wide field and our unimproved hand, we're definitely planning to check here, but it doesn't come to that as the small blind leads for $25 and the straddle calls. We've got an easy decision here, there's no reason to get married to this hand, and I throw it away. Four hands later, we've got king nine suited on the button. The under the gun player limps in, and two more players decide to limp along. We've got a suited king in position, and really, I probably should be raising this, but in the moment, I decided to go ahead and limp along for a cheap flop too. The small blind folds, and the big blind puts in a pot sweetener type raise, making it $12. All the limpers call, and we're not going anywhere for the great price in position, so I call as well. The five of us take a flop, and the poker gods seem to be on our side today as it comes down king 9-8 with two hearts, giving us top two pair. The big blind leads out for half pot, making it $30. The end of the gun limper quickly calls, and the player behind him goes all in for his last $48. It falls to us, and we're definitely raising here to charge all the draws. There's quite a bit in the pot now, and considering people in Texas love to call, I bump it up pretty big to $160. The big blind instantly pushes all in for $285 total, and the under the gun player doesn't even wait for those chips to go in before pushing all in as well for $190. Well, there's no way we can fold top two here. I feel like the big blind probably has ace king, and the straddle probably has some kind of draw. There's no telling what the short stack player has, but I'm assuming it's another draw or pair of sorts, and regardless, the side pot is pretty large. After the dealer does a bunch of work to figure out all the side pots, we're off to a run out. Alright, let's hold. <laughs> I got top two. For the four dollars. gonna move. Oh, all right. Somehow our hand holds up four ways and we scoop a massive pot. We're only 20 minutes into our session and we're up almost three buy-ins with an $1,150 chip stack in front of us. 15 minutes later, we've got Jack six suited in the big blind. The first player straddles for $5 and there's a $20 raise. The player with the deepest stack who's somehow sitting with almost 4k at this 1-2 table calls and I decide to put in the chips to call in hopes of winning some big pots against this guy. The straddle calls two, and we've got four to the flop. I check dark, and it comes down 7-3-5 with two hearts, giving us a gut shot. Action checks around, and we get a free turn in the form of the four of hearts, giving us our straight. I lead out for $35, hoping we'll at least get a call from a heart draw, but everyone ends up folding, and we take it down uncontested. The very next hand, we've got queen seven suited in the small blind. It folds to the hijack, who raises to $12, and the deep stack player in the cutoff calls. We've got a suited Broadway, so I call again to go up against the deep stack guy. I check dark, and the flop comes down 4-3-3 rainbow. 
This flop is definitely more likely to be in our range than our opponent's ranges, and I'm looking to take advantage of that if I can. The original raiser checks, and the last player to act makes it $20. I call with the intention of springing the trap on the turn, and the third player folds, so we're heads up now. The turn brings the ace of diamonds. I check again, and our opponent checks back. I get the impression from his demeanor that he didn't check back because he hit the ace, but he's more worried about our holding instead. The river brings the jack of clubs, so the diamond draw doesn't get there, and I lead out on the bigger side, making it $50. We get a quick fold, and our bluff gets through. It's about this time that our table really starts to cut loose with the crazy straddles. Under the gun makes it $5, the plus one player makes it $20, and the plus two player straddles all in for $62. Unfortunately, we don't pick up a hand, so we can't get involved, but things are definitely getting a bit off the rails here. I'm definitely not mad to be at this action table in the middle of the day, though. We fold for the next orbit until we straddle under the gun in this next hand. Four players limp in, and we look down at a dreadful 9-4 offsuit. I check our option, and we take a free flop. It comes down ace-9-8 rainbow, so we flop second pair with basically no kicker. It checks all the way around to the last player who puts out a bet of $20. Now it's worth mentioning that this guy is a bit of an action player. He's rebought several times, he's participating in the crazy straddles, he's chasing a lot of draws, and he's generally just willing to get the money in. When it folds back to us, I feel like it's too early to fold second pair given that, so I go ahead and call. The last player folds, so we're heads up to the turn. And it's an interesting turn as it brings the ace of spades. It's less likely that our opponent has an ace now, and I'm starting to think draw type hands like jack 10 could be a more realistic holding if he keeps betting. I check once more, and he makes it $25. I'm a bit torn here since his sizing does look more like value than a bluff, but I think we have to decide to either fold here or just be sticky and call on both the turn and the river. Ultimately, I decide to go with the calling route, and I put in the chips. The river brings the king of hearts, which shouldn't change anything if we're right that he's chasing a draw. I check, and he makes it $50. I'm really not happy about his bet size since it does smell like value, but I stick with the plan and pay him off. He flips up ace-queen for trips, and our hunch about him chasing a draw was wrong. 15 minutes later, we've got jack-10 offsuit in the cutoff. It folds to the plus-2 player who makes it $12, and the deep stack player calls. I go for a squeeze play, making it $40, hoping to take it down. Unfortunately, being in the 1C, I couldn't see well enough past the dealer to realize that the deep stack player actually put in what's essentially a min raise, making it $25. I'm definitely not pricing him out with this raise. The original raiser folds, and the deep stack has a no-brainer decision putting in the chips to call. All things considered, we get a pretty good flop of king 7 queen rainbow, giving us a straight draw. And even more, this board should generally hit our 3 betting, or rather, 4 betting range, despite our actual holding. Our opponent checks, and I see bet for $35. He decides that he's seen enough, and he throws his cards away. 10 minutes later, there's a raise to $10, followed by two callers. We look down at Ace-10 suited on the button, and I decide to go for another squeeze play here, making it $50. Everyone folds, and we scoop in an extra $33 without even having to see a flop. Four hands later, we've got Ace-King suited in middle position. There's a $6 straddle, and the plus 2 player on our right raises to 20 Well, we've got big slick, and we're definitely going for a 3 bet. I make it about 4x, raising to $75. It folds back to the original raiser who calls, and we're heads up to the flop. It comes down to 5 ace 4 rainbow, and we're probably well ahead here. Our opponent checks to us, and although it's a bit risky, I don't want them to fold their under pairs right away, so I check back for deception. The turn is the 8 of hearts, and now our opponent leads into us for $50. There's not much to be scared of at this point, and I just go with the call. The river pairs the board with the eight of spades. We're pretty much only losing to ace eight at this point, and there's no reason to suspect that our opponent would show up here with that. When she checks it over to us, I think about betting small enough to get a call for a moment, but if she's holding any other ace in her hand, I expect we'll get paid off on most bets. And if she's holding an underpair, then it might make sense to bet on the bigger side to make it look like a bluff. For both of those reasons, I decide to go with an over bet, making it $200. After a bit of thinking, she shows pocket queens and folds, asking if she was good. No ma'am, you were not, but good lay down. Two hands later, we find ourselves in a double board PLO bomb pot. Everyone pays $3, and we all go straight to the flop, or in this case, two flops. It comes down ace 5 10 with two clubs on top, and 4 8 4 rainbow on bottom. So we flop top pair with a second nut flush draw on the top board, and we just flop top pair on the bottom board. We're really only interested in this for the top board, if anything. Action folds to us, and I put out about a $15. We get three calls, and the four of us head to the turn. 
we see the seven of clubs on top and the four of clubs on bottom. So we pick up the second nut flush on top and our pair of eights on the bottom is negated since we're just playing the trips on the board now and any pocket pair beats us there. The first player checks and I put out a bet of $30 with our flush. Everyone makes the call and we're off to the river where we see the king of hearts and the five of spades. This doesn't change anything for us on either board and when we get checked to again, I think we could check our bet here. We're obviously losing to a better flush, and it's possible that someone could be holding that here without wanting to raise, as it would encourage other players to stay involved for a bigger pot. I decide on a check, and unfortunately it checks through, which tells me that we definitely missed out on some value. I show our hand, and we're chopping with someone holding pocket kings for the boat on bottom. Two hands later, we've got king-queen offsuit in the button. Three players limp in, and we raise to $18 with position. All three limpers call, and we're four ways to the flop, which comes down 8-7 ace with two spades, giving us nothing but a couple of backdoor draws. Still, when action checks to us, I put out a c-bet for $30. We get no resistance as everyone folds, and we take it down with king high. 25 minutes later, we're involved in another double board PLO bomb pot. We're dealt ace-king 4-3 with diamonds, and there's seven players to the flop, which is a pretty great one this time, as it comes down 10-king-king king rainbow on top, and 7-4-9 with two spades on bottom. So we've got trips with the best possible kicker on top. We're only losing to king 10 and pocket 10s. The player before us leads for $21, and although we've got a great hand, I don't think we can raise here since we don't want to get heads up and only win half the pot. We want to keep the other players involved, so I just go with a call. The two players behind us call, and the small blind pots it, making it $150. The original better calls, and we're ready to get the money in now. I repot it, which really only allows us to raise it up to 300 total, which is the max. The bomb pots here are capped to help prevent the games from breaking, which is definitely something that used to happen more regularly before the cap was introduced. The two players behind us fold, and the other two players make the call. That's what I want to see. And I got two pair on the bottom, but... Yeah. The under the gun player shows queen 977 for a flop set on bottom, and it sounds like the small blind had king 10, though he doesn't show his hand, which makes me think that that might not actually be the case. Either way, our king's full of aces is good for half the pot. 15 minutes later, we've got ace-king offsuit again on the button. The action player straddles under the gun to $13, there's one limp, and I raise to $45 in position with our premium holding. The action player pushes all in for 43 total, and the limper calls as well, so we're playing heads up for the $4 side pot. We get a good flop as it comes down king 4 deuce with two spades, giving us top pair top kicker. The limper checks, and I put out a c-bet of $50. We get a quick fold, and we get to see the rest of the run out versus the all-in player. Oh, oh! Did you look at the other one? Yeah, six hours. Oh. <laughs> Good plan with that. Thank you. Four hands later, we're in yet another double board PLO bomb pot. We're dealt king queen nine three with spades, and there's nine players to the flop. It comes down jack king ten with two hearts on top, and four five six with two spades on bottom. So we flop the second nuts on the top board along with the draw to the second nut flush on the bottom board. Action checks to the middle position player who makes it $21 and the player behind him calls. I make the call as well and all four players behind us call too, so the seven of us head to the turn. We see the ace of spades on top and the eight of hearts on bottom, so we pick up the nuts on the top board though we could easily get quartered here. As long as there's at least four players that stay in the pot though, it shouldn't be a problem. On the plus side, we do pick up a redraw to the nut flush or even the royal if the jack of spades comes. Unfortunately, we don't improve on the bottom board. It checks to the same player who bets almost full pot for $170. The next player calls, and at this point, there's probably not too much difference between calling or shoving. With it being a $300 cap, that means we'd only be raising another $106 on top, and we're not really pricing anyone out, and I don't know that I want to since we want more people in the pot in the case where our straight gets quartered. I end up just going with the call. The player behind us calls, and we see a few folds, so there's four of us left heading into the river. On the top board we see a black jack, but unfortunately it's clubs, not spades, pairing the board and probably putting us behind. The river doesn't improve us either as it brings the jack of diamonds. The first player bets the max of $106 and the next player calls. At this point, I don't think we can fold as there's too much in the pot and we just have to be right one in five times to break even here, assuming that we're getting half the pot. It's possible that this call is a mistake long term though, given that somebody's probably going to have a set here, but I end up putting in the chips to call. The last player calls as well, and it's time for showdown. The first player shows they've just got a straight on the bottom board. 
The second player shows he's got a set on top that hit his seven outer on the river for a bow, and the last player on our left shows that they've got a straight on bottom and two pair on top. So our straight was good the whole way till the river, and unfortunately we're down $300 from this one. The capped betting keeps us from losing more, granted if there was no cap, we probably would have faced a bigger river bet from the person who hit their bow, and we would have been able to get away from it, ultimately saving us some money. 10 minutes later we've got a premium, 10-4 suited in the hijack. The plus one player raises $12. As soon as I see this player's raise, I recognize that he's been making bigger raises with bigger hands and smaller raises with more speculative hands. I think to myself that this could be a good squeeze opportunity if we see any callers. The guy with the big stack calls in middle position and I decide to go with the plan, making it $40. It folds back to the original player who folds and the big stack calls. And we get a pretty decent flop as it comes down 858 rainbow. We should be able to get a C bet through on this paired board which has virtually no draws. Our opponent checks and I down bet to $35. He mucks and we take it down. Two hands later we've got queen 9 suited in the plus 2 position. There's a $5 straddle and the plus 1 player folds. I decide to open here with a raise making it $15. The cutoff calls and the big stack 3 bets to 35 from the straddle. This 3 bet sizing is pretty weird. Given that he's out of position, plus the color in between, I'd expect to see something closer to 5x our bet, but instead it's really not costing us to call much more, and he'll be out of position if we do. I put in the chips to call, and the third player does the same. The three of us take a flop which comes down jack 4 deuce rainbow. We don't catch anything, and now the straddle checks. This hand is playing really weird, and it just doesn't feel like a good spot to bluff, so I check as well, and the cutoff follows suit. We get a little glimmer of hope though as the turn brings the 9 of clubs giving us second pair. The big stack leads out now for a little less than half pot, $50. We're definitely calling here given the action and the third player folds. We're heads up to the river which is essentially a blank when it comes the 5 of spades. Sure, maybe ace 3 gets there, but I don't expect such a hand would have made such an awkwardly small 3 bet preflop so it's probably safe to rule that hand out. Our opponent now leads into us for $125. It's a pretty good sized bet in that it has me wondering if we're really good here. His preflop bet size kind of felt like a pot sweetener for cases where his hand hits. If that's true then I'm thinking he's probably got some kind of smaller pocket pair that was hoping to hit a set or maybe a big ace in that case. It's possible he's got an over pair but I just think it's unlikely given his preflop raise size and I highly doubt that those hands would check on the flop. It's probably safe to rule them out. After thinking it through I feel like there's enough of a chance that our hand is good and I put in the chips to call. Our opponent shows ace-king for no pair, and our read was right, our hand is good. 15 minutes later we've got the last interesting hand of the night. We're dealt ace-10 offsuit on the button. The plus 2 player races to $12 and the big stack calls. I go for another squeeze opportunity here making it $50. Unfortunately, as soon as I make the bet, it's pointed out that the big stack had actually min raised to 22. There was some awkwardness with the way he was putting his bet out, and being in the one seat it was really hard to see what actually happened. I'm not happy to see that, as we'll probably get called here instead of getting folds, which is not what we were hoping for with this hand. It folds back to the original Razor who calls, and the big stack calls as well. I'm not feeling super thrilled as we're three ways to the flop. It's not the worst flop though as it comes down ace-four-five rainbow, so we do manage to pick up top pair at least. This could be bad news though since our kicker isn't that great. When both players check to us, I'm happy to check back with top pair here for pot control. The turn brings the king of clubs, which shouldn't change anything. The first player checks, and the big stack makes a tiny lead for $20. I just go with the call here since I don't want to blow up the pot, and the third player calls as well. We see the nine of diamonds on the river, which feels like a safe card for our holding. No obvious draws get there, and it really only helps two combinations of ace nine suited. When both opponents check again, I'm pretty confident that our hand is best, and I think we can bet for value now. I make it a little more than half pot for $125. Given the action, I think there are definitely some worse holdings that could call here. Unfortunately for us, both players fold, but I'm happy to scoop in one more pot before calling it a night. Well, it was a pretty good session. We played for a little over three hours, bought in for 300, cashed out for a little over 1700 for a win of $1,428. So pretty big win for the one two game, which like I said at the beginning, they're big in Texas. People chase their draws. There's lots of action. We saw a ton of straddles happening and came out ahead, thankfully. 
Just a reminder, if you're interested in the custom Huggy Poker merch, we got the card protectors, we've got the hats, we've got the hoodies. Check out the store. I'll link to it above. Either way, if you enjoyed the episode, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. It helps out the channel. If you want to see more of this, hit the subscribe button, follow along. I release these episodes every week. And otherwise, I'll just see you on the next one. Take care, guys.